So on to lesson three in our overview of sheet and roll erosion assessment core terms and concepts. And this is a soil type or K factor. Um, again, I'm telling you that the original RK LSCP equals A formula is still Russell II's foundation. These are the five factors. Um, when it comes to the K factor, which currently is just called your soil type in Russell II, right? This is our conceptual diagram of, of what a profile calculation looks like, the base computational unit in Russell II. Lo and behold, step two, choose your soil type, right? So you're gonna have to select your soil type and that selection is going to provide key information to Russell II. When you select your soil type, Russell II will also then know your T values. So that happens to show up here on different screens. It may show up in different places. Um, what, what does this, these terms mean? What does soil type factor, erodibility, inherent factors, you know, how, how does this relate to the real world? Okay. Again, let's, um, let's dig into that. So let's talk about the K factor or soil type, what it means in the real world, and what it means in Russell II. Okay, the K factor is a measure of the soil types susceptibility to erosion based on inherent factors, okay? So I want you to think, you know, this isn't looking at, well, if I improve the soil with, with manuring and no-till and management over time, this is like the inherent, the inherent properties of the soil, um, how it was born, factors of soil formation kind of properties. So the, the question we're really asking, or Russell II is asking is, you know, how does a change in soil series impact sheet and real erosion if all other factors say constant? constant? So you kind of think of a continually bare and tilled soil surface, right? If, if, if you compared um, a Frederick soil in the valley versus a Kenansville in Suffolk, you know, if you if everything was the same, they were continuous bare and tilled, how, how would they fare with respect to erosion? All right, so as, as your K factor goes up, the risk of sheet and real erosion goes up. So remember that, because I'm gonna show you some different K factors for different soils. Um, well, where does this K factor come from? Well, this is where we work with our soils folks, right? The latest K factors, also known as K sub F in some of these resources, is available for every soil series in NRCS Web Soil Survey and the Sergo database, okay? Um, and the K factor is based on average values basically in the soil survey for some of these soil properties, texture, hydrologic group or permeability class, organic matter and structure. So look at this a little bit closer, right? Sand, silt, clay. The more silt you have in your soil type, the less sand you have, the higher K. What does that mean? There's gonna be some measure of higher risk of erosion the more silt you have and the less sand you have in your soil. Hydrologic group or permeability class, right? So the more your soil tends to run off, the higher your K would be. That kind of makes sense. Um, you know, you're gonna have more transport potential if we don't have water going down. The less organic matter you have, right? To promote aggregation, to keep, um, the soil from, uh, to help the soil resist detachment, the less organic matter in your soil, the higher the K, right? So these are some of the factors that go into it. You don't need to know all this stuff. You just need to understand that soils are going to differ in their susceptibility to erosion. Um, I'll try to keep, I do think it's useful to, to remember these things. One way to think about texture effects on K is that sand is relatively easy to detach, right? Harder to transport. You know, think about a sandy beach, you know, that, that, that just doesn't hold together. Clay is harder to detach, but easier to transport. Your clay particles are small, but silt is intermediate. So silt can be relatively easy to detach and also to transport. Basically, any anytime you see I got a silt or a loam, okay, Russell II and in the real world, that soil is going to be a higher risk of something that's more sand, more clay. Um, that's one thing I think it's useful to keep in mind. Silts and loams tend to be more um, erodible. Your K factor can range across cropland soils, you know, within Virginia counties. So in some counties, your K factor for soils that are, that are cropped can range from 0.1 to 0.4. 
That's a 4x difference. Okay, so when I talked to you about climate, right? If anywhere in your county, you're going to apply the same R factor. So you're not going to vary, your climate doesn't vary from one field to another. But in some counties, like for instance, Augusta County, which I'll use as an example coming up, there is a lot of range in K factor across the different soils. In other counties, as I'm saying here, the range is much narrower. So if we go to Accomack, or maybe Essex County, Virginia, those coastal plain counties, the, 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 soil, the soil survey does not suggest there's a major difference in, in, many, in many cases between the, the, you know, the soils that we see on cropland. So what the, answer, the point is soil type selection can have, not always, but it can have a major impact on soil loss results in some counties more than others. And I'm going to next, in a few moments here, I'm going to tell you how you can find out whether your county tends to have a big range or not. Um, significant judgment is sometimes required for your K factor selection in Russell 2, right? So you, you got a field or an area that you want to model in Russell 2. What soil type is representative? Um, and you know, we'll look at an example of that here in a moment. And judgment may also be required for interpreting and explaining the impact of your K factor selection on Russell 2 results. Well, that's a lot of words. Let me let me see an example, Chris. Okay. So here's an example, just a kind of a random field uh, in, a, in Northwest Augusta County, right? Um, and perhaps if you're from up there, you recognize it. But I just picked this one because it had some interesting soil in the field. So we have a good amount of 3B, and then you can see there's some 75 C and B, right? So this is basically one soil type. There's another down here by the, probably by the creek, um, and there's just 3B. So let's look at these soils. The 75 is a Shenval loam, hydrologic class B, moderately low, low runoff. The 19 is a Chavez, fine sandy loam, hydrologic class A. So it, it has um, very low runoff, better, better infiltration better drained. And then uh, Cotico, I hope that's the right way to pronounce it, hydrologic class C, moderately high runoff. So, you know, we have these different soil textures, loam versus fine sandy loam, right? Remember texture, okay. This has got more sand. This has got less sand. Um, this is moderately low runoff. Um, it's got more runoff probably than this one, okay. So how does this all factor into or, or impact our K factor. So here's your K factor and your T, right? K factor 0.32, for the other two soils, it's 0.17. Oh gosh, Chris, this is so boring. What does this all mean? What it means that is this, that if you decide, okay, look, half the field is 75 B or, B or C, right? Shenval loam and half the field is Cotico fine sand loam. I got to pick one of these two. If you keep everything else constant, right? If you, instead of picking Cotico, you pick Shenval, your soil loss estimate is going to double. You already know that because the K factor is about twice up here in the Shenval loam. The K factor is about double the K factor down here. And of course, they tell you, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't assume that in Russell too, because the factors are not always independent. But I, I ran a, a test case. When your K factor doubles, your soil loss is going to double. Um, so it's just something you need to keep in mind. But but you already know, right? For your county, you're gonna you're gonna be able to figure out. Okay, these are the soils that have a higher K value. And there's going to be more erosion risk associated with them. The T values are the same, right? So if we were trying to assess, well, are we meeting T or not? Um, in terms of the target we're trying to achieve, if, if T is our focus, not always in, in our different projects with Russell 2, but if it's our focus, then T is the same. But in some cases, the Ks are different and the Ts are different. So, you know, where do you find this information? Again, if you if you go into Russell 2, and we'll talk about loading databases and other lessons, but you go here to your soil icon, you click on that, you know, and it's shown it's in the back here, but you'll get a list of counties, and then you open Augusta County, and then within that you find your Shenval loam. And well, let's take a look. You can drill in and, and you can find 
the, the rotability number. This is your K sub F, right? This is your, your rotability 0.32. And you can also find your T here and some of the other values that go into you know, dictating this. The problem is if you want to get to know the soils in your county, right? And kind of where they fall in terms of their, their K factors and T's, you know, digging through Russell 2 is not a very effective way to do it. So this is how I recommend you familiarize yourself with your Russell 2K factors and T values, you know, for your home counties. And I'll just, I'm not an expert in web soil survey and maybe you guys are, and you'll say that this wasn't necessary. But um, what I suggest you do is you, you go in here to web soil survey and first you, you select your soil survey area, your county as your area of interest. And you can do that here. And then you click soil data explorer and you choose soil reports and then soil erosion and Russell 2 related attributes. So you can get a report of the, the information that Russell 2 wants to know. It's the same information that should be in your Russell 2 database. Um, and lo and behold, you get this printable here, the printable version of the report, right? Which, which the, all the K and T values, the Russell 2 related attributes for my county, in this case, Augusta County, Virginia, you can see there are your K values, there's your T's. And right here, Cotico, C.17, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I recommend, again, you don't have to use Russell 2 to learn about erosion risk in your area. Get this report. And I, again, I wouldn't necessarily use the old hard copy. I would go to WebSoil Survey, get this report, start to educate yourself about which soils are more and less vulnerable to erosion just based on their inherent properties. So that takes us to a review question for this lesson, which is this. All other factors, climate, slope, et cetera, being identical, which of the following soil type selections would you expect to produce the highest soil loss in Russell 2? Um, and I've got three soil series. And just based, based on the texture and the hydrologic class alone, you should be able to answer this. But I've made it extra easy for you. So everybody should get the right answer. Let's see what you come up with. First of all, D is wrong, OK? This is not a trick question that can't be answered with the information provided. I wouldn't do that to you. Let's, let's start looking at the textures. I got a clay loam, a silt loam, and a loamy sand. What did I tell you? The more silt you have, the less sand you have, the more vulnerable, just generally speaking, your soil is, your surface, your surface texture, the more, the more vulnerable it is. So that would suggest that we're gonna we're gonna keep that in mind about the bookwood silk loam just on texture. Okay, now let's look at hydrologic class. Like just based on the soil's inherent properties, do we expect soil to run off more or less? So the better drained it is, right? The more water can get in, the less runoff we would expect. That would, that would probably be um, you know, a factor. So hydrologic class B, which means it's moderately low runoff. Hydrologic class A, low runoff. Hydrologic class C, moderately high runoff potential. Okay, so this has high runoff potential and it has a silt loam texture. Hmm, well, I got the answer right here, right? K sub F is 0.37 for the bookwood silt loam. And in some ways that's all you need to know, right? Is that it's higher than this one. And it's, Definitely a lot higher than this one. Now, these soils aren't necessarily in the same county, but they're just a good example. You do not need Russell 2 to start figuring out where, uh, which soils in your area, or even on a, and when you look at a map, you can prioritize, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to check the fields that have, you know, across this track. I'm going to check these fields because I know the K factor is higher there and look at a worst case K factor. You are learning to predict and understand sheet and rill erosion. It will help you in Russell 2 and it will help you uh, even if you don't run Russell 2. 
We're ready for the next uh, lesson, topography.